Good evening, basketball fans, wherever you may be. Welcome to the NBA final. Portland and Chicago. It was almost inevitable. They were the favorites in November, and now they meet in June. We're all ready for this game, and the noise level here at the stadium will soon be earth shattering. It will be the great Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls going against Clyde Drexler and the rest of the Portland Trailblazers. Everybody wanted this series. Now it's here. It's a match made in heaven. What time is it? Do you have any questions at all? Just play the game. We'll referee. Have a good game, guys. Have a good series. In this corner, Michael Jordan. And across from him, Clyde Drexler. Playing against Drexler. He always wanted the shootout. The stage was set for the 1992 NBA Finals. And as game one got underway, it looked as if it was Drexler's trailblazers who were better prepared to seize the moment. The explosive quintet from the Northwest came out of the gate on fire. So Portland beginning to fly all over the court. Here comes Drexler. Yes, and it counts. 21-15, Portland. Blazers have hit their first seven field goal attempts. You haven't got the rhythm yet. You've got to keep, keep pushing to find your rhythm. What was to unfold from that point on was one of Michael Jordan's greatest games. And it would qualify as such before the first half was through. That's Jordan with the steal. Did Clyde Drexler feel the momentum shift? If so, it was barely perceptible as the second quarter began. The Bulls had taken only a three-point lead, but Michael Jordan had begun to feel the offensive rhythm his coach had sought, and Drexler was determined to throw it off. Lost the dribble off his foot. Three on two for the Blazers. Drexler all the way! Jordan was unconcerned. He had found his rhythm and his touch. But what would transpire over the next 10 minutes of play was noteworthy not only for the accuracy of Jordan's shots, but also for their range. Three-pointers had never been the hallmark of his game, but the opportunities were there, and he seized them. Jordan for three! There's Pippen, setting up Jordan, one over for another three! He is hot! Said to Phil, Phil, do you see what's happening? And he says, yeah. We couldn't believe it. Boy, when you're hot, you're hot, and when you're not, you're not. And that young fella is hot. I remember being on the floor at, during that half and a couple times catching the ball well beyond the three-point line and looking to the weak side and seeing Michael there and just throwing it to him. And it was, you know, it just was an instinct. You just tell it was, you knew they were going in that night. Pippen, two men to beat, right for the basket. I remember looking over to the NBC uh, table after he'd made maybe his fifth or sixth in the first half and kind of shrugging his shoulders uh, because, you know, even, even Michael, as great as he was, knew that that was something special. Michael indicating he can't believe it. He feels it. There's nothing else he can say other than the man feels it and lets us know. This is the greatest performance maybe ever in the single half playoff or in the history of this league. The rest, as they say, is history. The Chicago Bulls went on to defeat the Trailblazers handily in game one and then went on to win the 1992 NBA championship. And on the way, the legend of Michael Jordan grew. 
It now was measurable by distance as well as by hang time. He had long defied gravity. In this game, he showed he could defy logic as well. What a start for the defending world champions of the NBA. I started running for that three-point line. I felt a great rhythm. It felt like a free throw, really, you know, from that distance. You know, the only thing you could just sit back and, and say, ah, and wow, and ooh, and, you know, just like a little kid out there, you know, everything he threw up, he hit. He was hot, and uh, we all knew it, he knew it, and he just uh, was going to go out there. I don't think he was going to miss from two, from three, or from half court range, you know, he just had that feeling. And so, after a series that brought us one of Michael Jordan's greatest games, he and the Bulls celebrated their second NBA championship. It was a scene that would be repeated four more times in the years ahead.